Up to this point, we've just been working with the page loaded function. Now the page loaded function happens as soon as the page itself gets loaded. Now that is an event as soon as the page is loaded, hey, run this code. But we don't really have much control over that. We want to be able to control, okay, do not run this code until something happens, like a button is clicked, something is swiped, something is resized, or something like that. And so that's where jQuery event triggers come into play. jQuery events are essentially saying, okay, an event is some action, something that happens. A button is clicked, something is resized, something is the rotation changes, or something like that that causes this event, and then it then causes some code to actually be run. And that code itself then shows something visible to the learner. Like as soon as they click on something, the result of the code is visible. So if I click on a button and then the animation happens, the learner knows that that button then controls the animation. So this is how you do an event code or one way to do it. There's several different ways, but we're using the selector to say, hey, section one button, when something or on click, when something is clicked, then run this function. Now there's different ways that you can do it. You can do instead of click, you can do mouse enter, mouse out, on swipe, different things like that. And then essentially what we're going to do is we're going to run a function and that's where we can then add our class. And so we can say section one add class of anime. So in our demo, what we're going to do is we're going to create a jQuery event, and then we're going to use the add class function to add the class of the animation. So we can control when that animation actually happens. You can also do this with normal JavaScript events like the on click events on an object. You can do that as well, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in the jQuery one, and then I'm gonna show you actually how to do it in just normal JavaScript. So let's go ahead and just show you what this looks like. And what I've added onto this, if you download and open up inside of the 03 project files, I basically just added on bootstrap buttons. So animate section one, animate section two, animate section three, and animate section four. What we're going to do is as soon as this button is clicked, we're going to then fire the animation. So let's go into the code and review what the difference is in the HTML file. So I've essentially added the section right after this row. So we have this row of the different columns we've worked with, and then I added a new row. And this new row basically has four different columns as well. And it has a button that says animate section one, animate section two, and so on. So I've added classes of section one button, section two button, section three button, and section four button. Each of those will allow me to then fire or create this event that when clicked on, something will actually happen. From here, we're going to come in and we're going to add or manipulate that code later. So I'm just gonna come down a couple lines and we're going to add on our button or BTN for short, button one event. And so what I need to do here is I need to use the jQuery selector to talk to what object on the stage. And so I'm gonna come into the index.html file, grab the section one BTN just so I have it correct there. I forgot the dots, so I need to say that I'm talking to a class here. And then I'm gonna use the on events. And so I'm gonna say, well, I need to define it a little bit more. So within quotes, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a click event. And then I'm gonna say comma, and then I'm going to type in function. I'm going to run a function after that event is detected. Now that has to have an open and close parentheses and then an open and close curly bracket before the last parentheses there. Inside of there, I brought it down a line inside of the curly brackets. This is where I can add my code. So I'm gonna take this code that I've already written right here for section one. I'm going to cut that, bring that up a couple lines, and then I'm going to paste that section one add class events inside of that button. So now I'm going to hit save there. Let's go back into the browser and I'm going to hit refresh there. And you'll notice that every other object or every other column animated except for section one. That's because I have not clicked the button. I'm not adding that class until the person has actually clicked the button here. So I'm gonna click on animate section one and you'll notice as soon as I click it, the animation happens. Now I'm gonna click on it again and you'll notice a problem. It doesn't animate again. That's because the class of animated and bounce has already been applied. If I right click on this and go down to inspect elements, I'm gonna come in here and you'll notice inside of this section right here, the animated and bounce has already been applied so it can't reapply it. We're gonna talk about how you fix that in a later video. But for now, that's at least how you add a class using jQuery. So let's go back into the code and let's do the same thing with all of the different sections. 
except for section four. We're going to use just a plain JavaScript for section four. So I'm going to paste that, end it with this uh, curly bracket, closing curly bracket, closing semicolon here. And I'm going to change this one to two. We're going to go ahead and do this for three as well. Change that to three. And then we're going to take this code and we're going to place it inside of there. And I'm going to take this code for section three, place it inside of that function. There we go. So I'm going to leave section four. Let's go back into the browser just to make sure everything is working here. And you can see none of the code works except for the last section. But if I click on animate section three, that'll animate, animate section two, and animate section one, that will animate as well. So everything is working except for I want to do a different approach with section four. So let's go into the code. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a function called animate four. So I'm going to say function animate four. This is not a jQuery function. This is an actual plain JavaScript function. And I'm going to say section four is going to, this code is going to go inside of these curly brackets. Now it may look like less code and that's actually true. It is running less code than setting up this click event but we don't have to go into the HTML file and add a click event. We do that just through jQuery. So that's a little bit cleaner. So you're not having events in the HTML file and then uh, the code itself inside of the JavaScript file. But if you're using plain JavaScript and that's what you're more comfortable with, then this is the way to do it is you set up a function that will then run that code, but then you have to call that function on an event. So I'm going to come into index.html file and I'm going to go ahead and add an attribute to that button that says on click. Now I'm then going to paste the JavaScript function here. So animate four is the name of the function. I'm going to paste that in there and open close parentheses there. That is the, the way that you would do that inside of JavaScript is you add the event in the HTML file using like on click on load on blur different things like that. And then you go in and you set up those functions inside of the JavaScript itself. Now it doesn't really even have to be inside of the page loaded at this, in this case, it's a little bit better with jQuery to be in a page loaded event, but I'm going to go ahead and just take that outside of the page loaded events. I'm going to save that. Now let's go into the browser. I'm going to hit refresh and you'll notice none of the animations actually happen. When I click on this last one, the animation will happen as soon as I click on it. So it's doing the exact same thing. It's just a different way of doing it. If you're familiar with the plain JavaScript way of doing it, and that's what you're more comfortable with, then you can stick with that. Otherwise, you can have the event and the function all inside of the same code inside of the JavaScript. That's one of the benefits of jQuery. If you like doing it that way, you can do it that way. If not, you can do it the plain JavaScript way. Some of the other events that you can do are double click, submit, mouse leave, mouse enter. You don't have to stick with just the click. You can have something, as soon as my mouse is hovered over something, then something will trigger. That's some of the different events that you can use in jQuery and JavaScript.